You'll turn to number 496, Victory in Jesus, 496.
We used to have a nerve pop out and just <laughs> right here. They know who that is in that camp. But yeah, it's a lot more intense, but it was, it was pretty good. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> All right, now the congregation's going to do it. All right. <laughs> now, that's great. I really appreciate them doing that. Looking forward to everything that will be done tonight. Appreciate our young people being willing to do this. And it's always difficult when you get up in front of other people and uh, especially when you're seeing it from this way, just the nerves start flowing and it is it's completely different. I'm sure they still sing it louder at camp. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I bet you they get a lot more into it. Oh, yeah. They'd have to have it warmed up a few times before they got into that. But uh, anyway, that's great. I've got just a couple announcements uh, and then we'll prepare for our offering uh, for the, this evening. Uh, a couple of answers don't forget tomorrow, Carowinds, young people, uh, teenagers, anybody leaving with the group, uh, they're going to be pulling out at 6.30 in the morning, be back around midnight, and uh, and it is uh, cashless down there, so just be aware of that. Uh, they do have kiosks where you can get a card, and from what I understand, uh, <coughs> the card can be used outside of Carowinds also, so you're not, you haven't lost any money there, so that's good. Uh, also, uh, this Saturday, we have a group going to the fair uh, at in Dublin, and they're going to be passing out tracks. And the cost to get into the fair is seven dollars. And if you'd like any money to eat uh, or any expenses, then uh, just make sure you take that with you. But they'll be leaving the church here about 4:30, and so if you're interested in going to that, uh, just plan accordingly. And then also there's information in the bulletin about Kayla's uh, Kayla Bradley's baby shower, and that is coming up here in uh, about four. I think it's four weeks, five weeks away, uh, August 27th at noon. Uh, there will be some sandwiches there, and it tells in the bulletin all the information where she's registered and all of that. So anyway, God's really blessed us today. We had a lot of visitors here in our services this morning, and thank the Lord for that. And I hope that you took it upon yourself as a ministry uh, that you were going to do here as part of the church to make those visitors feel welcome. And we always want to extend uh, a welcome hand to these folks and Anybody that comes into our church could see him. our brother back here. I think you're from Missionary Baptist Church in Valley, correct? Okay. Uh, he's been in the revival services before, but uh, it's good having him here. But we always want to make our visitors feel welcome because the first impression, if you've heard this said before, you never get a second chance to make a first impression. So you always want your first impression to be good. And uh, the more people get to know in a church service, the easier it is for them to incorporate themselves into the services as well, into the church. And and uh, that's what we want because there's a lot of people looking for a good church home, and I think we have one. Man. And uh, so we want to make that available to them also. But if we can get uh, some ushers, are y'all doing this? Or? All right, well, I'm going to turn it back over to them. Are y'all praying for y'all? Yep. Give me a call on them. Okay. okay. I guess I'll call them to pray. So they can last know if you mind praying for the offering. Dear God, thank you for this day. Thank you for everything you give me, Lord. I want to pray for Preacher Walt that he will reach us the right way, Lord. I want to pray that you will bless the offering. I want to pray for safe traveling to the Carolina's trip. Please don't want to pray. Amen. I would say thank you. You may be seated, but I'm all out of whack, so. <laughs> <laughs>
seated. All right, I wonder if we have any Bible memory verses to say for tonight. Any young people? They're going to say there's one okay. that. Any, uh, anybody else? Any young people? All right, how about any of our adults? Well, this is going to be a rough one. There we go. From 6.3, the wages of sin is dead. But the gift of God is in the life through Jesus Christ. That's right. <coughs> good. Anybody else? Yep, me. Steps of good man are ordered by the Lord and he's lighted in his life. You had a great problem there. Yeah. Did you have your hand up there? No. Okay. <laughs> he was raising days in us. <laughs> Anybody else have one? Get the same. I've got one. Uh, it was mentioned this morning in the message there. That really weren't from church, but uh, it's Ecclesiastes 12. I can't remember which verse, but it's let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter. Fear, fear the Lord, and keep his commandments, for this is the whole duty of man. Yeah, that's good. Very end of the book. It's a good conclusion. Anybody else? Those are all good. Maybe just not a memory verse, maybe a special verse that meant a lot to you sometime through the week. You say that too. Anybody have one of those? For by grace are you saved through faith. Yep. Not by works, lest any man should Yep. It's definitely not a works, it's by grace. You don't really appreciate God's grace until you start seeing it evident in your life. But boy, I tell you what, we can't do anything without Him. Right. And uh, He's just, He's very good to us. So anybody else? Yep, here. Me and Mike has been working on this week is to who much is given, much is uh, required. Yep. We're all held accountable. Who much is given, much is required. That's good. Anybody else? All right. Well, we're going to have, I think, a special. Is that all right? <coughs> okay. I'll turn it back over to them. The first part that I really like. Oh, 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 oh. The first part that I really liked about camp was the team that I got put on. I got put on the Marines, and at the end of the uh, week, uh, we won. And <laughs> the second part that I really liked was the food. Their food was really good. The third part, the message. They had some really good messages. And in one of those messages, I went up for um, a, a, and I prayed that I could forgive people more so I wouldn't be holding grudges against them. And the favorite thing that I did was, the favorite thing that was really there was the messages, they had some really good messages, and I really liked the words I keep up. Um, one of the parts that I really liked about camp was probably the games. Um, I, there was a lot of really fun games. Um, I, I really liked how we won. It was also interesting. <laughs> but um, there was one of the messages that really spoke to my heart. It was about having a better attitude. <clears throat> it just really spoke to my heart and I went up. Amen. Praise the Lord. Probably the my favorite thing I did at camp was probably when Scott and um, some other counselors picked us up in the um, I don't know what they're called but Zorbs, Zorbs and they threw us down hills. It was really fun. <laughs> <laughs> Tell them what a Zorb is. A Zorb is this big bubble that goes around you and you can like people ram into you and you go flying. <laughs> <laughs> I really, really like the messages, and I went up on almost every single one because all of them spoke to me as I had to go up for um, forgiveness as I had a lot of grudges against people, and I went up to where I could have a better attitude like Billy, and um, I just had a really good time at camp, and my awards, I... Finished my verses, which they did something different this year. They gave 30 verses, which it's always been 25, and only four people out of the whole entire camp finished.
their verses, and I was one of them, and I was really, really proud of that. <laughs> and then I got the, though my team was last, I was on a different team than them, but I got last place. <laughs> but I'm still happy because I got the best on my team. Okay. Tell them the last shall be first. <laughs> <laughs> Um, I really got excited that I got to go to both camps. Uh, it gave me an opportunity to get close to God. Um, one of my favorite parts about camp was going in the dorms and knocking each other over uh, and making them roll down the hill. Um, it gave me one of the messages. Uh, it was to give my whole life to God and not hold anything back. And I just wanted to do that for him and serve him. This is my first time ever going to camp, and I really want to thank God for giving me that opportunity because it was just a really great experience overall. Like, the games obviously were great, and the food sometimes. <laughs> but what was really amazing to me was to see the energy and enthusiasm coming from all the other campers. Like, they really were there, they wanted to learn about God. So that was just amazing to see because with all the negativity going on in the world, it was just refreshing to see people who really wanted to know about God and learn more. But one thing that I really enjoyed was I met a girl, she was our cabin counselor, her name was Claire Langdon, and she was from Crown College, and she was talking to me about going to Christian College, which I had never considered before. So I was really thankful that God used her because I made a decision that when I finish high school, I'm gonna to go to a Christian college. Yeah. This was my second year going to teen camp, and it was a lot of fun. I made some new friends, and the preaching was really good. There was this one message that really spoke to my heart. It was about um, Daniel and how he purposed in his heart not to eat the king's meat. So I decided to purpose in my heart not to kill myself. But the food was good. I really liked the tacos. <laughs> and, um, the games were really fun too. Um, so this was my second year of camp and I just wanted to thank God for letting me come to this camp. I made a lot of memories with people and probably my favorite thing about camp is all the people that who like want to come and learn more about God and dedicate themselves and just worship God together, like Lexi said. And um, also, like Lexi said, there was in my cabin, um, Claire. Um, she was a really big inspiration to me, and she was also my team leader. And um, I just I just wanted to thank God for um, all the other Crown Girls that came. And um, the messages were really good too. On um, yeah, I think it was Thursday night. Um, Richie Harper preached preached a message on do you want to be like Jesus or not? And he talked about how Jesus was perfect and how he was um, substitute and submissive to his parents who were sinners, and just how perfect Jesus really was. And if we really want to be like Jesus, we have to be submissive. And um, if we want to be like Jesus, the my, and we can't just think about ourselves all the time. And um, so this, this year it was really good, and it was definitely the best for me spiritually. And just like all the people there were just awesome, and um, new friendships. Um, they just, whenever you go to camp, you can get so many new friendships and you can just rely on them for anything. And you can just text them and ask them for something and they'll give it to you. And I'm just really thankful that I can do that. And I really thank God for this week. That week. <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm a little nervous, so just bear with me if I stutter. Um, this is also my second year at camp, just as Rachel, and you know, there are tons of memories that I made at camp, and that's what I love, love about camp. Um, 
But one of the messages, it was the same as Abigail, was also talking about eating the king's meat, about David. And it was actually the same when we had the cold wars, and that really, you know, hit the spot with me because, you know, we all fall in the world's temptation and the lust of the world. And it really, like, told me, you're doing that. And I also love seeing the amount of people that were making decisions and changing their life at camp. That's what I also love yeah, about it. And it encouraged me to make my own decision. And that was to give myself to the Lord. And not to fall into those lusts of the world. And to really use myself to spread the gospel. And I hope you all can help me with that. So, yeah. Yeah, that's good. My favorite thing at camp was we had a speaker. His name was Chase Whitten, and he used to be a MX racer, a dirt bike. He used to race dirt bikes. And what he did was he jumped over one of our one of the counselors, the uh, camp director. He jumped him in the dirt bike while he was laying down. It was pretty cool, not gonna lie. But uh, <laughs> one of the part of my favorite thing at camp was our dorm leader, or the person that was taking care of everyone was Kurt, and he really didn't care when we went to bed, so we normally stayed up to like <laughs> 2 or 3 in the morning, so, but my favorite message, all the messages at the camp were fantastic, they were really good, um, like Rachel, my favorite camp was, are you going to be more like Jesus or not, <laughs> and yeah, I really like that message. <laughs> Um, so, this was a pretty good year at camp. Um, I'm not ashamed to admit that my team got first place, honestly. <laughs> <laughs> we were undefeated for a good part of the week, and then there was a really rough basketball game, but we're not going to go into that. Um, I'm pretty sure most of you have heard Brother Richie Harper speak, and he, he had amazing messages. Um, as people have already stated, my favorite was to not follow yourself with the king's me. And, you know, the energy that Richie gives, you know, it really gets you into the message, and I think it actually scares some of the kids there that have never heard him preach. But Chase Wynn as well was very good, and the thing that I think is the best about camp, and the thing that I like most about camp, and you won't understand this until you go to camp, and especially this camp, is the closeness that people have together, because, you know, most of you are all there for the same reason. Most people are there by choice to learn more about God, to do for God, and to make choices in their life. And you don't have to worry about worldly things or, you know, all of these things that drag you down while you're here. And the biggest thing, and I was talking to one of my counselors about this, is you can't let those consume you again as soon as you get out of camp. It's like going to a revival. You can't let the revival end as soon as the revival service is That's right. <laughs> One thing I really enjoyed about camp was seeing the effort that the counselors give, because you know they don't have to be there. They don't get paid. They don't get anything for being there. They be there just to see us kids grow as Christians and stuff like that. And another thing I really liked was Richie Harper's messages. A lot of them used the messages on Daniel, defiling himself with the king's meat, being worldly and stuff like that. But I like his icebreaker to the messages most of the time, yo mama joke. And that's one thing you do not expect, but other kids expect, and I really like seeing that. But... I didn't really make any major decisions at camp, but one thing I did realize in that was I was a backslid Christian. And that's one thing God opened my eyes up to was seeing where he wanted me, what he wanted me to do, his will for my life, and that really helped me this week. Well, this was my first year at camp, and it was definitely an experience. It was enjoyable. And uh, I didn't really have a favorite message. They were they were all exceptional as well. But one thing that really spoke to me at the end of the week, Pastor Tommy told us that it was an army, and all the teams were military teams. And one thing he said, camp was sort of like boot camp. We were there to learn. And then as we left camp, the world was like a battlefield to us. And the more I would think about that, the more I thought when we come to church, it's, it's sort of like a boot camp. And when we go out through the week, we need to treat the world as our battlefield and spread the gospel. Um, we, yeah. All right. uh, my favorite part of camp this year was um, 
probably watching Hunter Maple get plowed with the silver ball. <laughs> 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 he would been running around pushing all the smaller kids over, and I know where Maple just went and trucked him. That was pretty good. And then, uh, spiritual wise, my favorite part would have to be when Richie came in for Thursday night and Friday night. I really like listening to Richie preaching. He preached a message on how to be a man of God, and that was probably one of my favorite messages he preached. Alright, so 
hypocrisy. First off, uh, it'd be good to know what hypocrisy is. So what the Merriam-Webster Dictionary states that hypocrisy is a feigning to be what one is not, or to believe what one does not. Or it could be said, a behavior that contradicts what one claims to believe or feel. So basically, hypocrisy is just saying one thing, and then going right around and doing like the exact opposite, yeah. saying one thing, doing the other. And actually, verse 8 here, in the, where we just read, it actually gives quite a good definition of hypocrisy. This people draw an eye on me with their mouth, and honor me with their lips, but their heart is far from me. Um, so that is hypocrisy. Um, so first, we're going to look at a few of the types of hypocrisy. Now, of course, I'm not going to cover all the types, and there are many different types, but these are just a few of the things the Lord laid on my heart um, to give, and I'd also like you all to notice just how often, like, pride and hypocrisy go hand in hand. It's true. It's just very interesting. It's, like, I've never thought of it before until as I was studying for this message, but it was actually really, really interesting. Um, but they just go hand in hand, and so just keep an eye out for that while we're reading. Um, so first off, we have the judging hypocrite. All right, so I'm going to flip back. I'm going to have you all do a lot of reading today, uh, but back to Matthew chapter 7. We'll be mostly in Matthew. Um, so Matthew chapter 7, we're going to read verses 1 through 5. Uh, Matthew 7, verse 1 through 5. Judge not, that ye be not judged. For with what judgment ye judge, ye shall be judged. And with what measure ye meet, it shall be measured to you again. And why beholdest thou the mote that is in thy brother's eye, but considerest not the beam that is in thine own eye? Or how wilt thou say to thy brother, let me pull out the mote out of thine eye? And behold, a beam is in thine own eye. Thou hypocrite, first cast out the beam out of thine own eye, then, thou, then shalt thou see clearly to cast out the mote out of thy brother's eye. So basically the judging hypocrite, these are the hypocrites that go around almost like they're trying to help others, but uh, in reality, they're the ones who need the help. That's right. You know, like it says uh, here, they're trying to get the moat. That's kind of just like a little speck. They're trying to get the little speck out of their neighbor's eye. Well, they have basically just a big two-by-four in their own eye. Like, it's not going to work too well. Like, you have a big two-by-four. You're trying to grope around, trying to get a little speck. You're not going to see too well to be able to get it. You're going to end up hurting both yourself and the other person. It's not going to work out too well. Um, and this also is why preachers need to have a good report. Yes. Um, like it says in, the, in 1 Timothy chapter 3, verse 7. Uh, I won't read there, but it basically just says that preachers need to have a good report and to be above reproach of men. Um, he must be above reproach because if he can't live the Christian life himself, then how can he ever expect others to do it that he's teaching? Um, he's got to live it himself first and lead by example. Sure. Um, so that, that's the judging hypocrite. Next we have the lying hypocrite. Uh, so this will be Matthew chapter 6. This is the back page. Uh, Matthew chapter 6. We'll read the first six verses. Take heed that you do not hear all before men to be seen of them. Otherwise you have no reward of your Father which is in heaven. Therefore when thou doest thine alms, do not sound a trumpet before thee, as the hypocrites do in the synagogues and in the streets, that they may have glory of men. Verily I say unto you, they have their reward. But when thou doest alms, let not thy right, let not thy left hand know what thy right hand doeth. That thine alms may be in secret, and thy father which seeth in secret himself shall reward thee openly. And when thou prayest, thou shalt not be as the hypocrites are, for, let, for they love to pray standing in the synagogues and in the corners of the streets, that they may be seen of men. Verily I say unto you, they have their reward. But thou, when thou prayest, enter into thy closet, and when thou hast shut thy door, pray to thy father which is Pray, pray to thy father, which is in secret, and thy father, which seeth in secret, shall reward thee openly. So the lying hypocrite, this is the hypocrite who will tell you one thing and will do the exact opposite. So um, this hypocrite, like, like we saw in these verses, we have these men, they're going about, they're like doing apparently what looks like all these wondrous things. You know, they're out praying in the middle of the congregation. They're giving alms. They're doing all these great things. But all they're doing is for the praise of men. They want you to believe that they're doing it like for the glory of God, but it's it's only for the praise of men. So they're actually lying by their actions, um, and so we need to guard against that because it is very easy to do. It's a very easy thing to do. Um, like, oh, well, not just let me, but um, but <laughs> a lying hypocrite. Uh, next we have the unsaved hypocrite, and this one 
this is a very, very scary one. This is probably the scariest one of all, yeah. because oftentimes it can be hard to know who these people are in order to witness to them. Um, sometimes they themselves believe that they're saved because they've been lying to themselves so long that they are, uh, but they really aren't. It, like they themselves have eventually believed that lie. Um, so these are the ones who say that they're saved, but really aren't. And uh, that's really, I'll, I'll just give you all, show you all my testimony. I don't know that I've ever done this in church before, but I'll just show you all how I got saved because I actually was one of these unsaved hypocrites at one point in time in my life. Uh, so whenever I was about three or four years old, uh, I was, uh, I just have this memory in my head, I still have it to this day, of going up to my mom, uh, and it was at the apartments where we lived, and I just remember going up to her, saying a few words, then laying her head on the lap. And for years I thought that's when I got saved, I thought I'd prayed on her lap and stuff like that, and gotten saved. Uh, but whenever I'd actually think about it, I'm, there's this voice down the side of me that told me that was not when I got saved. Like, I'd hear messages, uh, like even though I was pretty young at the time, uh, I, I still knew kind of what was going on and everything. Don't ever underestimate young kids. That's right. Yeah. Um, I, I still knew a good bit of what was going on. Um, so, like, uh, there was, uh, I, like, this voice inside me kept on telling me that I wasn't saved. Uh, and, but, like, every time it pop up, I just, like, no, no, I'm saved. Like, um, and I, I just kept lying to myself that I was And so, it was several years later, like, I struggled with doubt for years, that little voice. Like, I... I always just shoved it away every time it came, but it kept on coming back anytime salvation was mentioned. Uh, so I was probably, I don't remember exactly, it's probably about seven or eight years old. I remember exactly where I was, it was. We had a triple bunk bed. It was a pretty small room. We had a triple bunk bed. I was in the middle one. Uh, wasn't much room in there, but I was small enough to fit. So at the time. Uh, so anyways. <laughs> uh, so anyways, uh, I was in that middle bed, and I was just like, you know what, I'm sick and tired of this. I'm just going to pray and just settle this thing right here, right now. And so I prayed and asked Jesus to save me right there, and I remember it plain as day. I can't remember every single word I said, but I know for a fact that I prayed and asked Jesus to save me. Yeah. But, you know, those years prior, I, I told everybody that I was saved, and so I, I was one of those lying hypocrites, or those unsaved hypocrites. I, like, lit, like, I knew the walk, I knew the talk, I knew how to live like a Christian, but I really wasn't one. Um, but it didn't really end there either. Uh, because for years after that, like even though I got saved there, I actually was still kind of putting my faith in that time and place back when I was about three or four years old. Um, because I told myself so long that's when I got saved that like, I, I'd actually believed it. <coughs> and so, uh, so for years, years and years, I actually struggled with doubt because of that. I was saved at this point, but I still struggled with doubt in my life. Uh, and it wasn't until I was I can't remember exactly. I think it's about 13 or 14 years old. Uh, I went up to my dad. Uh, we were in the house over there, and I just told him, I was like, Daddy, I'm not sure I'm safe. And so he dropped everything he was doing, took me into the room, and just explained it to me step by step. Of course, like I'd grown up in church, I, I knew the steps. Uh, so he, but he took it, made, made sure I understood each each one. Uh, and then there's one thing he told me. I don't think I'll ever forget it. It was uh, now if you. Told me if you pray right now uh, and you really mean it, then one of two things will happen: either you'll get saved right now, or uh, God will remind you of the time when you got saved before. And so I did that, and God did remind me of that time when I was seven or eight. And but the relief I felt right after that it was it was just amazing. Like I knew when I got saved now, it was it's just awesome, and it's like a weight lifted off my shoulders, and. Uh, the devil's tried to throw that into my life since then, but every now I, I know where I can go now. Okay? Right. I just take him right back to where I got saved, and like the devil, that's where I got saved. You can't throw that down on me anymore. Yeah, right. uh, it, it's, it's just a blessing now. Um, but yeah, for years I was one of those unsaved hypocrites, and maybe maybe somebody here in this congregation is. It, it's it, like you can't lie to yourself and believe it. Like I, yeah. I was there. It, it's a bit easier than you think. Uh, so anyway, the unsaved hypocrites these are those who lost. Um, these people are lost, and yet some genuinely believe that they are saved. Uh, so, so that was the some just three types of hypocrites. Of course, there's more out there, but those are just what God gave me. But then uh, you also have the dangers of hypocrisy. Um, so these, again, these are just a few of the uh, points that God gave me. This isn't all of them, but this is just a few of them. So the first, first off, you have blindness. Uh, Matthew chapter 7, verse 
7, it should be Matthew 6 still, so it's just another page over. It's not like that. Um, we, already, we already read these verses, but uh, like I said before, um, whatever, or like it says in the Bible there, you've got that beam in your own eye. Like, the, as a hypocrite, you're trying to get a little note, a little speck out of your neighbor's eye, but you've got that big 2 by 4 stuck in your own eye. Uh, if you have a 2 by 4 in your, like, right there on your eye, you're not going to see too good. Uh, and that's, that's the blindness it's talking about. And, um, of course, if you try to help somebody else while you're doing that, it's going to end up doing more harm than good. Uh, Matthew chapter 15, verse 14. Uh, turn up there real quick. Just read it. Matthew 15, 14, it says, Let them alone. They be blind leaders of the blind. And if the blind lead the blind, both shall fall into the ditch. Sure. Now, we as Christians, we, we can't be hypocrites and we can be blind. And, but as Christians, we also are supposed to be the leaders. But if the leaders are blind and they're leading the blind, then like it says in the Bible, they're, they're both going to fall into the ditch. It, it's just not going to work out. It's going to end up doing both of them harm. And that's why we as Christians, it doesn't matter um, whether you're a pastor, a uh, Sunday school teacher, or even just somebody who sits in the pew. And the Lord's just not called them to do a part of the church. They've got other things that the Lord's called them to do. But no matter what type of Christian you are, uh, you need to make sure that you are doing God's will, that uh, you're being the type of leader that you should be. Um, but also, it, it's very great because even with the blindness, God can heal the blindness. Uh, Psalms 146, verse 8, just the beginning of the verse, it says, The Lord opened the eyes of the blind. And you know, he, he's just the one who just makes us to see when, you know, when we're lost. We get saved, God just opens our eyes right there. And uh, even after we get saved, if we mess up and uh, we have this blindness in our lives, he can, open our, he can open our eyes again to the things of his word. We, uh, the Bible says, ask and you shall receive. Um, but we just must seek him with the whole heart, with the pure heart. Um, but So that was blindness. Next, we have poverty. Now, this can be referred to as spiritual poverty and or physical, physical poverty. Uh, so Matthew... Chapter 6, verse 2. Uh, just read that verse again. Therefore, when thou doest thine alms, do not sound a trumpet before thee, as the hypocrites do in the synagogue, and in the streets, that they may have glory of men. Verily I say unto you, they have their reward. So, in this verse, it tells us that the uh, reward for their, like they were doing good things, they were giving alms, but their only reward were the praises of men. And praises of men, they don't go too far, especially yeah. when you talk when you think about the rewards of heaven. Um, like even if it, even if like they do their works and they can get money for it or something like that, um, like it's not going to add up to much. And when it comes right down to it, because you can't take it with you when you go to heaven, you know. Yeah, right. um, so, but also getting the praise of men is all they care about and all they get, and it's a matter of pride. It, like it's. Um, it's a matter of pride and hypocrisy. Uh, so, like I said before, pride and hypocrisy go hand in hand. Um, and so they're doing, like, they're all like, oh, look at me, look at me, and they're trying to get the praise of men. Uh, and they're trying to get that pride lifting up because they're spiritually dead, so they're trying to get that pride lifting up. But, you know, God hates pride. Mm -hmm. he, um, he said a proud look, a long tongue, and he gave, gave seven things that the Lord hates. And, Proud love is one of them. It's abomination unto the Lord. Right. God hates pride. Um, so we need to make sure that we're not proud. But remember, pride and hypocrisy go hand in hand. So you've got to make sure you're not a, a hypocrite either. Um, but uh, God openly rewards those that choose to do things for him and him alone. Verse number four, it says, And thy father will see it in secret himself shall reward thee openly. So, um, God rewards, though they may not always be material, that it might not be like a money reward or possession or something like that. It's if it's infinitely better than anything this world has to offer. Be it the praise of men, any amount of money, God's rewards are what truly matter. Um, and uh, Matthew twenty three verse twelve says, "And whosoever shall exalt himself shall be abased, and he that shall humble himself shall be exalted." So we need to make sure that we are humble, like I said earlier. Um, we need to not have pride in our lives. 
because pride goes before destruction and the haughty spirit before a fall. We make sure that we're humble. Uh, so that was poverty. Next we have spiritual decay. Matthew chapter 23, um, and we'll read verses 25 through 28. Matthew 23, verses 25 through 28. Uh, it says, Woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites! For you may clean the outside of the cup and of the platter, but within they are full of extortion and excess. Thou blind Pharisee, cleanse first that which is within the cup and platter, that, thou, that the outside of them may be clean also. Woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites! For you are like unto wide sepulchres, which indeed appear beautiful outward, but are within full of dead men's bones, and of all uncleanness. Even so, ye also outwardly appear righteous unto men, but within ye are full of hypocrisy and iniquity. So, hypocrites, oftentimes on the outside, they they look clean, um, like they, they can look great. Like, like I said earlier, I, I gave my testimony. Uh, like if you were to ask me, I would have said I was a Christian, um, and by the way I acted, you probably would have thought I was a Christian because I, I knew how to walk the walk, I knew how to talk the talk. But in truth, I love a Christian. And um, so like the outside, it, it looked great, but the inside was dead. It was rotten. And that Christians can be that way too. Yeah. Um, the inside can just be decayed because they haven't been doing the things that, that they should be doing. They, they've only been doing it like for outward appearances. Like I said before, for the praises of men, or they've been um, just been doing it for the praise of men or whatever. Um, so they focus more on their outward appearance. They completely neglect things which are most important, things which God wants us to work on on the inside. Um, and remember, what the, what's on the inside will eventually come out. That's right. Yes. But what you put in is will also come out. So you got to make sure that you're putting the right things into your life yeah. because that that is most important. Because like you can work on the outside all you want, but eventually it'll be corrupted by what's on the inside. Um, so, as your spiritual standing declines, so also does your relationship with God. Um, that's kind of given, like, uh, like as your spiritual standing goes down, your relationship with God, like, um, actually, I think I wrote down a verse here. Job 13, 16, he also shall be my salvation, for an hypocrite shall not come before him. All right, so, um, now, God does hear his children and everything, but... When there's that sin barrier there, he, he doesn't hear you because sin separates us from yeah. God. Right. And so we got to make sure that we have that connection going. And so um, this spiritual decay, it can hurt our uh, relationship with God. So we need to make sure that we are always doing what God would have us to do. Uh, Matthew 23, verse 14 says that hypocrites shall, re shall receive the greater damnation. God hates hypocrisy. It says they'll receive the greater damnation. Um, so God, he, God, he hates hypocrisy. Um, now let's get to the next point because it's getting close there with, with time and everything. But um, anyways, so God takes hypocrisy very seriously. So now I'm going to ask you all, are you a hypocrite? Just think about it for a second. Have, do you have... Like, have you been judging others blindly and thereby leading them astray? Have you been leading others astray? Uh, or perhaps you've been wearing a false identity like, like I was for years. Uh, perhaps you're not the man you pretend to be. Doing things more for the praise of men than for the glory of God. What what are you doing? Because we're, we might be doing great things, but what, what, what are you doing it for? Are you doing it for God? Or merely for the praise of men or for rewards of this world? What are you doing it for? Um... Bible says in James chapter 4, verse 6, and again in 1 Peter 5, 5, God resisted the proud, but give grace to the humble. Are you, are you proud? Um, like, are you doing, are you struggling with that matter of pride? Because, <coughs> like I said, pride and hypocrisy, they go hand in hand. Are you letting pride get in the way of what God would have you to do? Um, so, anyway, if you all just bow your heads. Uh, okay. Hey, Father God, I just want to Thank you so much for this opportunity to just come and preach to these people, dear Lord. And I just want to thank you for the message that you've given me. 
And I pray that you would just bless this invitation now. And Lord, just speak to their hearts, Lord. I, I'm just human, Lord. What I say doesn't matter, but it, it's what you say, Lord. It's what you say. That, that's what truly matters. And so I, I pray just speak to their hearts, Lord, and just deal with them as you see fit and as they need you, Lord God. And Jesus, I pray for you. Well, we're going to have a song of invitation here in just a minute, but I want to say first of all, I'm very proud of our young people. Amen. Amen. I think we got, of course, I'm probably prejudiced, but I think we have some fantastic young people. They have great hearts. Uh, I see just wonderful things in their life, and, and a lot of that is attributed to the fact of what's invested in them, and from their parents, from the workers in the church. And uh, we all play a role in their life, a very important role. Uh, don't ever underestimate that and the value of what goes on in cold wars and other things that happen here around the church. Uh, and you know, every time they go to camp, I hear nothing but positive things about our young people. And uh, so we have a lot to be proud of, you know, for them. And I'm expecting God to do great things in their lives <coughs> as they continue to yield to the Lord. But, you know, I was thinking also as Nathaniel started preaching there, the richness of God's word. He said, turn to Matthew 15. Well, he wasn't here this morning. He didn't even know he was preaching until yesterday. <laughs> and I said, well, be in season, in season, out of season. That's what you got to be. And uh, he picked the very text that I preached from this morning. And I thought, well, God's wanting somebody to get this message. Yeah. And, but God's word is so rich, you can just, you can't. Preaching enough. There's so many things you can get out of one passage. And uh, that's why we need to get God's word in our hearts and the change that it will make in our life. And then, too, as he talked to about blindness, uh, blind people, people who are physically blind know they're blind. But people who are spiritually blind don't know they're blind because they don't know what it is they're supposed to be seeing. And blindness creeps in when there's hypocrisy, creeps in when there's pride, creeps in when there's other things. And blindness is something we have to constantly be on guard against. And we need to ask the Lord, Lord, I need you to search me. I need you to try to see if there's any wicked way in me. Lord, if there's some, something I'm blind to, I want to be teachable. I want it to be exposed so that I can see clearly what it is you have me to do. And uh, if, you de if you depend on the Lord, the Bible says, Seek, and you shall find not, and it shall be open unto you. We need to ask. Uh, we need to keep on doing these things. And uh, I guarantee you, God will expose some things maybe you were blind to. We all have blind spots, every one of us. Uh, things maybe other people see in us we don't see. So be teachable. Uh, that's what the Bible says, reprove, rebuke. Those are verbal things that we hear from other people. Those are not positive things. Reproving and rebuking are sometimes things you don't want to hear, but they're the things that will help you. And then it says exhort with all long suffering. Like, hey, God can help change that. Like he gave the verse there about how God can heal blindness. He can take care of that. He can take care of that problem. Just depend on him. But I appreciate that message, Nathan. That was a great message. Okay. Hypocrisy, something we all have to guard against. Let's all stand. We're going to have a song of invitation. 251 as we sing. You, uh, God spoke to your heart. Won't you come pray? And ask him. Say, Lord, search me. Try me. See if there's any wicked way in me. Anything you need to expose. Ask me soon. 251.
prayer. And I'm going to ask Jody if he's going to close our service of prayer for us, please. Lord, thank you for the day you've given us, Lord. Thank you, God, for the service tonight. Thank you for the teenagers. How you bless us, Lord, with a, a good group of teenagers. Thank you for the camp that they have sent to, Lord, to uh, set aside a week, Lord, that they can hear messages and draw closer to you and make decisions, Lord, that will affect the rest of their lives. Pray, God, that you bless our church. Help us, God, to always stay on the path that you have for us and to reach out into the, the hedges, Lord, to just try to find the lost and bring them in and Remember that the, keep the main thing the main thing. Pray God you bless 